This video describes the data collection process for the Momentum Lab. Our setup consists of a linear track, two vernier go motion carts, and a computer with vernier graphical analysis software. There are two one kilogram masses on the track as well. These are only used to help position the carts at the beginning of each trial. At the bottom of the screen, you can see the carts we are going to collide. Above this is the software window that shows the positions and velocities of the carts. For this example, the positions are plotted together and the velocities are plotted together on a separate graph. For the purposes of fitting the data into the experiment, I have plotted the position and velocity graph of each cart on a separate graph. The second video in this series will discuss how to fit the data. Each trial begins with the two carts set up on the track facing each other. They have been calibrated so that when they are against the one kilogram masses, they are approximately 40 centimeters from the center of the track. This is done so that the collision takes place near the center of the track. The calibration is set up so that the positive direction is to the right. The center of the track is positioned x equals zero meters. The software window starts out with the information from the initial positions of the carts. When I start the data collection, this data momentarily disappears and then is replaced by the data from the collision. Each collision in the experiment is slightly different. In the example here, the yellow cart is initially at rest in the center of the track. The green cart comes in from the right and collides with the yellow cart. After the collision, the green cart loses most of its speed and its momentum. This is transferred to the yellow cart, which then moves off to the left. If you look at the data traces, you can see this information. For about the first half second of data collection, both carts are at rest. Their position plots are horizontal lines. At about 0.5 seconds, I push the green cart, giving it an acceleration in the negative direction. This shows up in the velocity graph as a downward sloping line. The position line has a slight curve here too, but it is a bit hard to see at this scaling of the graph. At about 1.1 seconds, I stop pushing the cart. It now has a nearly constant velocity. This is seen as a downward slope line in the position graph and a horizontal line in the velocity graph. The yellow cart has been stationary this entire time, so its position remains zero. Its velocity graph also stays at zero. At about 2.0 seconds, the carts start to interact. Each cart has a few magnets in the front. These magnets are arranged so that they repel each other. If the carts are moving slowly enough, the repulsion of the magnets produces a nearly perfect elastic collision. You can see the change in speed of each cart clearly in the velocity graphs. After the interaction, the green cart has nearly come to a stop. The yellow cart moves off with a speed similar to the original speed of the green cart. When fitting the data, we are going to use the position data to determine the velocity of the carts. We could use the velocity information directly. However, graphical analysis software does some calculations on the position data to find the velocity. It is best here to use the raw position data. When fitting the position data, it is important to only fit the position while the cart is actually moving at a constant speed. The velocity data will help us choose the correct data for the fit. You can see how this is done in the next video.